What did you do after that? I don't know. I, I don't remember what I did when I got home. I don't remember. Um, I went to my therapist. I told her. I um, went home and I, um, a few days later, uh, started getting, I actually don't know how many days later, but I started getting calls and texts from Johnny, um, you know, uh, apologizing profusely. I mean, just, you know, he was, he said, I'd rather cut my hand off than ever lay it on you or lay it upon you, you know, and he had that way of talking. It felt like poetry. <sighs> And uh, he showed up to talk, like with the understanding that, you know, he understood I could never forgive him and it was done. So I felt kind of safe and saying, okay, let's have a talk or, you know, yeah, we'll talk. I, I, I think, I, you know, I, I know I just wanted to see him and he comes over, brings me gifts. He brought me a couple cases actually of that Vega Cecilia wine that we've heard about. Um, which is a really nice, expensive wine that I could never, at that time, dream of affording, you know. Um, and we talk, and he tells me that he had put this thing away, that I could trust him, that it would never happen again. Of course, it would never happen again. But he put this thing away. He killed the fucker is what he said to me over and over again. Put that fucker away. I killed that monster. I'll kill it again. It's done. I'll never lay a hand on you again. And I wanted to believe him. So I chose to. Chose to stay in the relationship? Yeah, I did. I, I believed it. But, you know, I believe it wouldn't... I believed that there was a line he wouldn't cross again, and that was it. So you stayed, correct? You stayed in the relationship? Yes. So, just, is this a good time? You no, want to do you break? Keep going. And it's a little longer. Please. Okay, thank you. So, could you please describe for the jury um, the evolution of your relationship after that time with Johnny? I don't know how long it was until things got bad again. Uh, he did start drinking again. Uh, I remember the it was it was almost you know he'd start drinking again the disappearing thing the coming back he'd come back at ran, like in the middle of the night to my house um and he it would be unclear to me you know drunk often really drunk and uh, kind of accusing me but not directly it was nothing was very direct it was a lot of accusations but they were veiled. Um, you know, what I was wearing, who I was with, why didn't I text him back? I didn't text him back right away. Um, when I, this is when I was at my place in Orange. Sometimes he would show up to catch me. I, like that was a pretext for coming over. And by the time, by the time we were done talking, we'd be, I, I would have thought I had convinced him that I loved him, that I only loved him, there was no one else. And then that we were back in an upswing and would go back to good, loving, like sick, romantic love, like kind, sweet, velvety love. <laughs> and then it would be something I said, why did you say it that way? Um, you know, if I had to leave for an audition, I could guarantee that when I, not couldn't guarantee, but two of those in a row and when I came back he was angry at me you know and I wouldn't necessarily know why and then he started accusing me of things probably like at first it was indirect and then it became really direct then the punching uh, of the walls next to my head was which is a constant at the at, at that time in 2012 when he was drinking um, eventually that became uh, you know him accusing me of cheating I'd defend myself I'd say you know, that's crazy, you're wrong, I would never, the normal things. And uh, it would escalate to the point where he would push me or shove me down and then I'd get back up. And this happened several times, that's why it's not more specific, I suppose. 
it, when I get back up, I'd, I'd, I'd look him in the eye. I made a point of getting up and looking him in the eye. It's my way of defending myself at that time. And I'd look at him, and he'd ask me if I wanted to go again and shove me back down. Eventually, it just hit me. Uh, remember, he hit me in the face when I denied having an affair with my ex-wife, my ex-partner at the time. Um, and he said he had proof. I denied it. And I was walking out of the bedroom, slapped me across the face. I turned to look at him. And I said, Johnny, you hit me. You just hit me. Do you recognize this picture? Yes, I do. And could you tell us what it is? Uh, it's a picture of my face with um, a note that Johnny left uh, for me by the coffee. Typically, is where we'd leave notes like that. And does this accurately depict the scene portrayed? It was one of those scenes. I, um, as embarrassing just, as it sounds now, I don't know which scene this came from. There was a lot. It escalated quickly, fast, and it was became. Amber, uh, let, let me ask it a different way. I'm thank just, you. <laughs> Um, is this a picture of you? Is it a an accurate picture of you? Yes. Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of 1783. Would you please describe for the jury uh, some of the cycles you had with Mr. Depp through 2012? So in 2012, the violence was pretty, you know, relative to what it became, pretty slapping, uh, backhanding. Well, it went from it went from this eggshell kind of you're walking on eggshells. Nothing you're doing is kind of right, but you don't know what you're doing wrong. Uh, and then I was doing something wrong clearly, but they were it was unclear within the scope of an argument what I was defending myself against. So it would shift from uh, a rumor he had heard that I was with. Um, my a friend or I had been photographed standing too close to a male person that was a person I'd have a and I had had something with and I was lying to him about and the it would be egg it would be eggshells accusations accusations and then he would explode um, it started with throwing things um, uh, destroying the property and screaming at me I remember the screaming at me was the worst because I kind of always felt like I had done you know, I had to defend myself. I had to tell him I, so he didn't think these things were true. And sometimes, you know, I, he would shift accusations. While I'm trying to dispel one accusation, he'd start another one. And um, nothing I could do to calm him down, it seemed like. I'd walk away, and that would make it worse. Um, I remember he, in my apartment in Orange, it would he would grab me by the hair or he'd grab me by the arm, face pull me into him, scream at me that way. He'd smash things around me. Then he would smash things very close to me. And then he would just hit me. And it started with slapping. Um, and it got to be like repetitive slaps where he'd hold me um, in a position and slap me multiple times um, in a row. Uh, then it would be you know, eventually I later would either push him off of me or I'd try to hit his hands away from me. I tried it, not in 2012 so much. At that time, I was mostly, um, my defense was, uh, I'd go some other place. Like, I don't, know how, I don't know how to describe that. It was, I'd focus on something else. I'd stand up, look at him, try to stand up to him that way. Later, I adopted other kind of strategies to deal with it, but... At the time, in 2012, it was, he'd have this blowout, and then he would leave, disappear, and he would, I'd be committed to not talking to him. I'm done with this relationship. I can't take it anymore. I said that so many times. And then he'd come back, clean and sober, telling me either he had a chip. He didn't have any chips, but he would say, I've, I've gone to meetings. I have a, I have a, a sober companion now. Um, I'm doing this program, I'm reading this, I'm doing this, and he was done with drugs and alcohol for good this time. And he'd come back in my life, and with the combination of him being sober and having gone through this horrible thing where I felt like my heart ripped out of my chest, you know, like a relationship ending is hard 
I think for anyone, but ending under that circumstance is really painful. And so when he'd come back, it would almost feel like a solve, a solution to that. And it would feel great and we would be good again. And it would be, he'd be extra nice and extra apologetic and extra loving. And it would just, then we'd be back in, in, in the good bubble, the warm glow. And eventually it'd get bored and then I'd see him drinking again. Um, when I started to get upset, noticing the pattern um, of the violence going with the, the drinking and drugs, then I, then he started sneaking it. So it became less clear and I'd have to look for clues as to what he was on. So I just knew how to react, you know? Uh, Johnny on speed is very different from Johnny on opiates. Uh, Johnny on opiates very different from <sighs> Adderall and, 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 and cocaine Johnny, which is very different from Quaaludes Johnny. But I, I had to get good at paying attention to the different versions of him. Uh, 2012, I was, in, um, I was in the beginning stages of this, just learning these patterns. I was just learning that drinking kind of correlated with the violence. Did you confide in anyone about these issues you were having? Yes, I did. Who did you tell? I told my therapist. I told, I eventually told my mom. And let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Defendant's Exhibit 150. Why did you decide to confide in your mother about the issues you were having with Mr. Depp? I felt safe talking to my mom because I knew that she understood these dynamics and she wouldn't judge me for staying with him, for loving him, even though um, this was happening and was happening to me, I knew she would understand. And when approximately did you start confiding in your mom about your issues with Mr. Depp and physical abuse? When did you start confiding in your mother about the abuse you were, be, were were suffering at the hands of Mr. Depp. I, I was confiding in her from the very beginning about the abuse, the psychological abuse, the kind of control, the disappearing, the not knowing where he was. The then he'd come back, and sometimes in the middle of the night, the constant accusations, like that sort of thing. I I talked to her about probably from the very beginning. Um, the fact that I was secret, I had to hide. Um, I couldn't tell any of my friends that I was with him for a long time because he told me everyone would blame me for the split with him and his partner. So I had to kind of sneak around and kind of get brought to his house, typically in, in a secretive way. And then he'd come to mine in a secretive way. And it was just all very, you know, so very isolating. And uh, I, I confided with her at the very beginning on that sort of thing, and then later opened up to her about some of the violence. I did it gently. You know, um, first I just wanted to have someone to talk to about how scary it was. You know, he is the rage and the the uncontrolled violence, the rage that this man had, and why it Objection, was Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. May we approach? Please? Okay. Amber, I'm going to take you up to March of 2013. Um, can you describe your relationship with Mr. Depp during that month? And I remember um, that was after a period of a really. Some, it was after a period of some peace, and then he, um, he in sobriety. Johnny was sober, um, drinking Bex, and my uh, dad. Uh, who was struggling with alcohol um, and drug addiction at the time, had fallen off the wagon, and and I remember he said, "Why don't we send a? I want to send a picture to you to your dad of support because uh, yeah, my sister was upset with my dad." Um, and so uh, he poured a shot and um, and 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 kind of said, let's take a picture. Uh, I, don't, I don't drink spirits, but I, I, I know 
that, you know, I kind of held up in that picture. It's kind of eerie because I just think it's bizarre. He had broken this long period of sobriety that I thought was going to be the, the end of him drinking forever. I <laughs> sounds foolish now, but I, you know, held up this kind of glass with him and we sent the picture to my dad because, it, you know, I didn't know what else to do. And I remember thinking it was weird that he was drinking and, um, and then the month got really crazy from that point on. It was, um, a bit of, um, a revolving door of accusations. Uh, he was accusing me of having affairs with, um, well, frankly, just one person I had an, I was an acquaint, I had an acquaintance with somebody and he was accusing me of, of, um, of, of being with them. And then it was accusing me of being with my friend, the one I had seen in Spain. Uh, I, I'm, you know, in these kind of arguments, nothing I do is working. I've uh, walking out of the room is me leaving him walking away from me, you know, Hey, where are you going? I'm talking to you that it, it, it went from that to, um, pulling me in by, by my arm, um, still shouting at the, about the accusations. Um, I'm trying to diffuse, diffuse the situation by trying to tell him I'm not sleeping with this person and I'm not sleeping with that person. And it was kind of, as soon as it seemed as though I had convinced him of one, there was somebody else he was sure I was sleeping with. Um, and he, he, it was a revolving door at that time. Um, a painting I, I had hanging on the wall done by my ex, who's an artist. That was, one day he, he was convinced that that was proof I was sleeping with her or having an affair with her. I didn't really love him. And all the while, I'm madly in love with him and trying to convince him. So March started with this picture of him doing a shot and he's kind of saying, let's send it to your dad to show support. And what I remember of March is just like an almost, ne it's almost like it was a never ending fight. It was just, there were breaks in it. What kept me in it is beca because I kept waiting for the other shoe to drop, you know, the sobriety shoe, if you will. I kept waiting for him to get to the point where it's not supportable or anymore and he's done with it and he's ready to get clean and sober again because there commences a period of like pure joy. And it was one fight after the other, March. So, so let me start with the painting incident. Please tell the jury what happened on that particular incident with the painting. Uh, as I mentioned, the painting which had been hanging there for uh, months, uh, one day he, he kind of stayed up doing cocaine, just drinking, doing cocaine music, which is un not in and of itself that weird in my relationship with Johnny at this point, you know, like he stays up and keeps weird hours and smokes and stuff. But the, the, he was drinking, um, brown liquor and doing a lot of cocaine. And it was like, it became clear to me in that argument, if you will, that it was, he wasn't making sense. He had effectively just taken, it seemed like, a turn and had decided that the painting was the big, the, an offense that he could not forgive me for. It meant I was having an affair with my ex-partner, whom I had already split, with whom I had already split, and it made no sense to me. So I'm, I'm trying to kind of quell the accusations by saying, you know, it's been there, and what are you talking about? And it's like, that doesn't mean anything. And, you know, he was demanding I take it down. He eventually takes it down and tries to burn it, but it was unsuccessful, luckily, because he was not, he, he didn't, he wasn't <laughs> with a, uh, one of those normal, what do you call it, Bic lighters, he wasn't very successful at doing it while drinking um, to the extent he was. But I remember it was this kind of ridiculous fight, like didn't feel like it needed to be an argument, but it seemed like nothing I could do, nothing I could say. I... Uh, tried leaving. I um, left the room. I left the house. I eventually came back. It was, it was like a whole night, of, an evening, a night, and then a morning of this. 
So this morning in particular, I think it was the like 22nd of, of March. There were several incidents in March though. Um, but in this particular one, he had something to go to. He was filming with Keith Richards and um, uh, Tom Waits. Well, let, let me, before you go into that part, let's, let's pull up uh, Defendant's Exhibit 161, which is already admitted into evidence, I believe, Your Honor. Yes, 161 with redactions. Is Thank you. Evidence. And I'm going to show you Defendant's Exhibit 161. And the date on this is 3-12-2013, and it's a text exchange between you and Mr. Depp. Do you see that? I do. Okay. Um, and the first one is from you to Mr. Depp. Just thought you should know there exists a book. Is that to you? Is it to Mr. Depp from you, or it's vice versa? Isn't um, it? It's Johnny texting me. Just thought you should know there exists a book titled Disco Bloodbath. And then you say, we need that book. And you say, is this about last Friday night by any chance? And he says, how can you make me smile about such a hideous moment? Uh, and I'm not going to repeat the rest of it. Um, could you tell the jury what happened on that Friday night? Um, there were, like I said, there was a few different incidents in March. Um, I believe this one happened in the Eastern Columbia building, which are one of Johnny's penthouses. They're in downtown, so a different part of Los Angeles. And we'd sometimes go there. Uh, I remember he was accusing me, again, of um, sleeping with this artist, this musician who I'd never slept with. Um, I was denying it. I, I barely knew the person. Uh, and then he was accusing me of, of, of sleeping with my friend in, in Spain. Um, and I, I remember nothing I could do. He like called this person on the phone and screamed at, screamed at him. Um, he didn't speak English, so he was really confused as to what he was being yelled at by Johnny. Um, but I remember those were the accusations. That, that was the fight that... It, but it was one to the next accusation. And I remember I was kind of doing that juggling act. I was in his, one of these fights, I believe it's this one, in his downtown ECB, we call it, um, loft. And we're in the kitchen living room area, and he backhands me. And, you know, it was, um, you know, he wears a lot of rings. Uh, I remember kind of just feeling like the, my lip went into my teeth and uh, it got a little blood on the wall. It, just that simple, a little bit of blood on the wall. As hard as it is, as hard as it is to explain this, I, I was so caught up in the relationship and also very occupied in defending what I only as could assume he believed, these accusations, um, that, you know, I didn't, I didn't internalize, like, I didn't make that big of a deal of it. I'm, you know, I kind of pride myself on being tough and, you know, I don't make a big deal out of, you know, smaller injuries. And I know that sounds horrible because it and hard maybe to understand but um I mean my best way to cope with it is I kind of you know minimize it make 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 sure no one <clears throat> make sure he knows that I'm I'm tough and can't knock me down and I make a joke of it clearly make light I'm going to, uh, Michelle, if you can take this one down and um, bring up 170A. Did there come a time in March, Amber, where you sent a picture to your mom? Uh, yes, this is um, sometime in March uh, 2013. I just, I, I sent it to her because I had been texting about some of the craziness and I... Objection hearsay. 
without saying what you said in the text, explain why you were sending it to your mom. I was reaching out. Uh, I was very lonely in what I was living in. And I wanted help. I wanted advice, help. It, some, I just wanted to talk to somebody okay. and figure out how I could make this stop. And, and is this a picture that you took of yourself in March of 2013? I did. Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of Defendants Exhibit 170A. Any objection? No objection. All right, 170A in evidence. You can publish the picture. Thank you, Your Honor. And how did you sustain that bruise, Amber? Um, I was, I had thrown a, um, I, well, I, Johnny slapped me. I walked away from him and that made it worse. We got into a, like a, a shouting match. Um, and he kind of did this thing with his body where I could tell he was going to hit me again. Um, I picked up a, like a, I remember it kind of like a, um, like a little pot, not a pot, but um, like a vase. And uh, I, I remember um, I got away from him enough as he reels back. I threw it in his direction and got, actually managed to get away before he got before he got me. Um, he grabbed me by the arm um, and he kind of just held me on the floor screaming at me. Um, I don't know how many times he hit me in the face, but uh, I, re I remember being on the floor of my apartment and I'm just, I remember thinking, how could this happen to me again? Can you bring up 170? And if we can, and just for, to, to start, it's 323-2013, and if we can scroll, scroll up. This is a text message exchange with your mom, correct? Yes, it is. Okay, let's go and scroll down and then. Your Honor, I'm going to object to hearsay. Right, let's wait until we get to the spot. Is this the picture that you sent to your mom on 323-2013? Yes, it is. Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of 170 just that, partake that picture that's on the text. With, with, Along no, with, with no words? Uh, well, it says things? from two weeks ago no. on it. Your I'll, Honor. I'll sustain the objection. If we redact the from two weeks ago, can we admit it then? And then just have the showing that it, she sent it to her mom. Maybe we for approach the date? Your Honor. Okay, sure. 